I'd like to thank uh, Sages and the um, panel here for the opportunity to speak. I am not Dr. Owen Pike. Uh, he unfortunately had a family emergency and couldn't be here to present today. I'm Tyler Cohen. I'm the current bariatric fellow at Stony Brook. Um, so we'll be discussing marginal ulcers and the continued major source of morbidity following gastric bypass. Um, some of the contributors to this paper have some financial disclosures. I do not, and none of the disclosures are relevant to today's topic. So laparoscopic gastric bypass remains the gold standard bariatric procedure. Um, it's been shown repeatedly to be safe with a 10% short-term morbidity and a mortality rate of 0.2%. Um, marginal ulcers represent a major source of long-term morbidity um, with a reported incidence in the literature varying from 0.6 to 16% depending on the means of diagnosis. There are many known risk factors for marginal ulcer formation, including NSAID use, tobacco use, um, foreign body uh, material at the gastrogenostomy. Um, despite our knowledge of marginal ulcers, the overall clinical impact remains somewhat unclear as some patients may respond well to a short course of PPIs, whereas others will develop intractable symptoms and ultimately require revision for um, chronic issues or acute perforation. So our objective is to examine the natural history of marginal ulcers and identify risk factors uh, for the need for upper intervention following the diagnosis of marginal ulcer after primary gastric bypass. In order to investigate this, we use the SPARCS database, which is a New York State um, specific longitudinal database. Uh, we queried the database for all patients that underwent primary gastric bypass between the years 2005 and 2010. We then excluded patients that had a perforation at their initial presentation uh, because we wanted to follow these patients longitudinally. Uh, we then queried the database from the years 2005 to 2014, so we had at least four year follow up for all the patients. And we analyzed potential contributing factors to patients that ultimately required operative intervention, including comorbidities at the time of their marginal ulcer diagnosis, complications at their initial gastric bypass, and age, gender, and race. Um, so our results overall in the five year period we looked at, there were 35,075 patients in the state of New York that had a gastric bypass. Uh, out of these patients, 2,424 were later diagnosed with a marginal ulcer, which represented 6.91% of the total gastric bypass population. 223 of those 2,400 patients presented with a perforation at their time of initial diagnosis, uh, which was 9.3% of all um, marginal ulcer diagnoses. And that left 2,201 patients with a primary diagnosis of non-perforated marginal ulcer, which we followed over time. Out uh, of these 2,200 patients, 204 subsequently went on um, to have operative intervention, either revision or perforation. Uh, that's 9.3% of the total marginal ulcer population and 0.6% of the entire uh, ruin wide gastric bypass population. Um, in our results, there were no difference in baseline characteristics between patients uh, that required operative intervention and those that did not. The mean age of the patient population was 42, and 81% of the patients were female. We looked at the time interval of surgical intervention after the initial diagnosis of non-perforated ulcer. Um, so the median time interval from the time of diagnosis to any surgical intervention was 248 days. Um, we looked at the time interval for repair, uh, which was 472 days. Not surprisingly, that was longer. Uh, that's repair for perforation, whereas the median time to revision was 165 days. Uh, the numbers on this chart don't add up perfectly because some patients were coded as having a repair and a revision concurrently. Um, so the cumulative uh, incidence for surgical intervention, uh, then looking at uh, by year after initial diagnosis, at one year the cumulative incidence of having revision was 6%, uh, at two years it was 8% increasing to 13% at five years, and 17% at um, eight years, and that's the uh, uh, confidence interval below. And this is the same uh, data represented graphically here. We then broke it down and wanted to look at an individual risk factors that could be associated with um, requiring operative intervention to try to help us better identify patients at risk. We first performed a univariate um, uh, Cox proportional hazard uh, model and identified any um, values, uh, that anything that had a p-value of less than 0 0.1, we looked at in a multivariate analysis. So this is a multivariate um, Cox proportional hazard model here. Uh, age in the database is encoded in five years inter intervals, so we couldn't get specific ages, but we, there was a, a statistically significant increase in the risk of operative intervention to the hazard ratio for younger patients. Um, at each five year interval, we saw that increase. Uh, there's also an increased risk of having um, revision if the patient was white, uh, if the patient had weight loss as a presenting symptom, or if they suffered from chronic blood loss anemia. 
the estimated cumulative incidence of having recurrence of marginal ulcer after surgical intervention. So these are patients that had a revision or repair for perforation uh, that later went on to have another um, issue with their ulcer, or another diagnosis of marginal ulcer subsequent to their revision. You can see it's a very high rate. Uh, at three months, the overall rate is 7%, and over the first year, it increases to 24% of those patients. So this study has some limitations. Um, any retrospective, or sorry, any database study has some limitations. This has a little bit more because we do have loss of patients that are treated outside of the state of New York. So if a patient had a diagnosis of marginal ulcer and then was treated outside of the state of New York with an operative intervention, we were not able to tra track those patients. Um, some of the patients that may have been diagnosed and treated as an outpatient may not necessarily be captured in the database as well. And we have no information regarding the medical management these patients receive for their ulcers. In conclusion, the overall need for surgical intervention following um, marginal ulcer diagnosis after primary gastric bypass is pretty uncommon. Um, younger age uh, patients, patients with weight loss as a symptom, white race, and patients with chronic anemia were at increased risk of having surgical intervention for their ulcer after diagnosis. And ulcer recurrence is very common even after intervention. Uh, so this data kind of um, suggests that we should probably be treating these patients that are at increased risk and patients that have revision uh, intensely and for a prolonged period of time for ulcer prophylaxis. Um, I'm now taking questions.